Hello, people of Earth. This week, we are taking a break from Last Looks while we are on tour in the UK. And by the way, come out and see us. Come where I think we're still there. And instead, we are serving up a brand new, well, actually an old new classic HDTGM episode. That's right. The only movie in the Fast franchise we haven't yet re-released from the vault. It is 2019's Hobbs and Shaw. I know this is a divisive movie, but it's one of my favorites, and I love this episode featuring all-star guests. We're talking about Adam Scott and Nicole Byer. But before this episode starts, since there is no last looks today, I wanted to make sure that you could still prep for our next new movie episode. And I'm sure you guessed it by now, but next week we'll be closing out the 50 Shades of Grey trilogy with 2018's 50 Shades Free. That's right, people. We done did it. All the 50 Shades movies back to back to back. We couldn't do that to you. So we had to split it up over a couple of months. Uh, we have a great guest coming up for that. And if you want to watch along with us, you can play 50 Shades of Grey on Max, or you can rent it on Apple TV, YouTube, or Google Play. And as always, make sure you send us your corrections and omissions for our latest episode on Ronald the Barbarian. And don't worry, we'll cover Ronald and 50 Shades Free on our next Last Looks episode. You can still submit corrections and omissions on our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm or leave us a voicemail. I love a voicemail at 619-PAUL-ASK. That's all I got, people. See you next time. Sentient motorcycles, Samoan warfare, and more insults than any movie ever made. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Fast and Furious we were promised. We saw Hobbs and Shaw, so you know what that means. the Largo Theater. Oh my goodness. Hello family. Hello family. Let me ask you a simple question. Where are my Hobbs people at? Where are my Shaw people at? Damn straight. It's a Shaw audience. This is the Jason Statham I have been waiting for. Holy shit, I could recap this movie or try to tell you what it's about, but simply there is not enough time. More things happen in the first four minutes of this movie than most pictures released on screen the entire summer. The first four minutes is the equivalent to what happens in both of the last Avengers movies. Um, we are going to break it down tonight we have an amazing all-star panel, and I can't do it alone, so please welcome my co-host, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! What's up, jerks? How we doing, everybody? Come on, L.A. This movie is fucking rad. <laughs> this movie is, you know how good this movie is? Sometimes they have to bisect the screen so they could show you more <laughs> images. One screen can't contain Cannot this hold movie. the movie. Split screen, baby. Jason. Pops and shot two, whole movie split screen. <laughs> split it four ways. Let's Mike Figgis this shit. Make it the time code of action movies. Jason, you and I <laughs> said something that I feel like we should share off the bat. We saw we it together said last night. Together. <laughs> we went on a date last night. And whispered to each other the entire time. I fucking love this. This oh, is the best. I, I leaned over at one point and said, I never want this to end. 
And that was and in it, the first five minutes. And I, the, I still, I, that sentiment remains. I think the movie's over three hours. I don't know. I don't care. It wasn't long enough. I would like to give this movie more of my life. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, well, we said, I think we said the thing that, that I think about, and I thought about it all day today. I also took notes on Alamo Draft House yes. order slips. <laughs> I have them as well. They are and it's, impossible to it read. It is straight nonsense. <laughs> Night. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? A team montage. Don't know. <laughs> I wrote it though. I wrote this. Uh, I wrote funny car. <laughs> Which now I think I do remember. Jason, <laughs> we were saying last night, it's as if the parents left for the weekend and the kids threw the oh, best yeah. party of all it's time. It's like the minute Vin Diesel was out the door, they were like, yes! <laughs> We get to play with all this shit. Oh, shit. This is crazy. <laughs> it literally was like, like, you want cars? <laughs> yup. You want guns? Yup. How about fights? We got them. Do you want old school Samo Samoan war weapons? I did not know that was yep. an option, but yes. <laughs> wait, 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 though. Normally, we can't bust balls in these movies, <laughs> but wait, can we now? Oh, we're gonna buzz balls. They, I mean, this movie is, is like also a legit comedy. It's crazy. It's all right, but again, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna get into too much. From the comedic superstar team, just like I'm talking Abbott and Costello. I'm talking about Statham and The Rock. Lewis and Martin. I'm talking about Statham and The Rock. I'm talking about. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, we obviously uh, have a... Uh, a this is a movie that we had to <laughs> continuously stop ourselves in the green room yeah. from having the conversation we ha are having on stage. Because we were... Numerous like, times. The minute we got back there, we were like, and hey, what about this? And hey, what about that? And hey, what about... Boo -boo? I could talk about it all night. Um, well, we have a fast and furious expert with us tonight. He has helped us break down these movies in the past. He also joined Jason and I on our outing last night. Uh, you know him uh, from such great shows as uh, Parks and Rec and Big Little Lies. Please welcome Mr. Adam Scott. Oh, man. Just to add a little bit to what you guys were saying about wanting more yeah. and wanting to give more of your life to yes. this movie. Please. I would watch this movie. No hyperbole, no exaggeration. I would watch this movie for five years. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Five years. I'm in. It's if you said right now we're just going to watch the movie yeah. instead of do the show, I'd be like, yes. Yeah, let's do that. I can't think of the last time I've gone back to the theater to see a movie. I will go back to see this movie. A million percent. One hundred percent. Or a million percent, sorry. No, 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 no. Yours, that beats a hundred percent, obviously. No, no, no. A hundred percent is the same as a million percent. <laughs> no. um, Adam, I mean... Like, obviously, you're devoting five years to it. Favorite part that just jumps out at you at any point? Anything you want to just talk about out, the, you know, out of the gate? Oh, God. I mean, there's so much. You know one thing that did occur to me today that I was like, that was, that was great, was when... <laughs> Period. <laughs> just occurred to you today. That was great. Yeah. There's so much, and the, that's right there. That's one of them. Yeah, uh, axe and chainsaw. Yeah, but when when Jason Statham's like, listen, I don't want you to touch my sister, and The Rock was like, listen, it's not 1955. If she decides she wants a piece of this, 
Then she could climb mountain. all over this dick or whatever he said. <laughs> she no, he would never say dick. No, no, he no, refers no. to himself as a mountain a that mountain, she can climb. Yes, 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 yes. Like she can free solo this shit. That's right. That's right. By the way, which and, means no condom. <laughs> But also... That's rock for that's, raw dog. Yeah. That's what I think. That's what I think everybody should be calling unprotected sex. I'm just really? going free solo on this one. You, you saw unprotected sex. I just saw trying to get your hands into the rock's bicep like holes. Like, <laughs> getting in there. Just like, well, By the way, oh, right under his ribs, I got a piece. Uh, yeah. you, could, you could climb the rock. I, no I, ropes. I, <laughs> um, I do I want to bring out our next guest before we go too deep into it but I will say the person I felt bad for there's an extended sequence on that airplane which we won't break down right now but Vanessa Kirby has to be asleep for all of it and I was like she must have been days like with that eye, like she had an eye mask on I was like I feel bad for her she's like hey you don't get to have any Are fun you in kidding? these scenes are you kidding? That is the greatest days of her like oh, she absolutely. got to sleep during those takes it's like the days on shows and stuff that I love are when it's just a full day of just having to walk and open doors yeah. or go to the refrigerator where you don't have any actual like dialogue. stuff to do. Yeah. But I just feel like you want to get in on that action. There's a lot of good dialogue. There's a lot of good fun. Yeah, a lot of good yeah, ball yeah. busting on that airplane. You don't want to sit on the sidelines when good shit's going on. I, I got to get in on this banter. Um, got to bust some balls. <laughs> Hobbs and Shaw 2, busting balls. By the if way... If they don't make a fucking sequel to this movie, I, like, I, I, oh I'm gonna my God. I'm going to quit the biz. Absolutely. We, I think That's we... That's a legit threat. <laughs> but the time, if they do not order a sequel to this movie, I will quit the biz. <laughs> and everybody quit going to movies. Um... This movie came in number one the first two weeks it's been out so far, so that's huge. But today, um, we have another guest out here, and she, I'm going to say, is a Jason Statham expert. And as we found out backstage, we'll talk about this a little bit, also an original Fast and Furious fan, like from the get-go. Like posters on her bedroom wall. Really? Of oh, this Vin is exciting. young Vin. She hosts a podcast called Best Friends, and she is also the star of Nailed It. Please welcome Nicole Byer! Yeah! Nicole. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome, oh, welcome. Thank you. So excited to have you here and did not know that you were a Fast and Furious uh, fan I, from the get-go. Oh my God, the first movie is just a remake of Point Break and right. it's perfect. Also, Vin Diesel, I just like would love to take a ride on that head. You know, <laughs> like, it's just like primed and prepped for my pussy. Like, I... <laughs> Like, I truly spent so much time just cutting out that bald head to make collages. <laughs> and that is so crazy. I mean, that is peak Diesel. We were talking about this a little bit backstage. Peak yeah. Diesel? Peak Diesel yeah. is Fast and Furious Diesel, I feel yeah. like. I just yeah. love a man who you don't understand, you know? <laughs> you know, I was on the car and something in the fast don't steal. Like, I, ugh, I loved it. <laughs> I mean, that I, is, again, just to remind everybody, that is a movie about street <laughs> racers mm -hmm. selling stolen combination mm -hmm. TV DVD players. <laughs> it right. might have been combination In this movie, VHS there is a TV. cyborg. Yeah. And like they the, pointed out in the Alamo video, like these guys have saved the world like four times. Four times. Oh, so four many times. times. The Not U.S. Enough. military depends on these guys. Mm -hmm. They make our intelligence officers look like <laughs> morons. <laughs> Fools, all of them. The cool thing about this movie, besides the fact that it's uh, a spinoff, is they didn't rely on any like other characters. It's like, no. fuck no. all you other yeah, yeah, yeah. Like They didn't bring in Kurt Russell, they didn't bring in anyone. They're like, no, we, we got it. Guys, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Cars weren't even central to the battles is it wasn't until the end of the movie that i was like 
oh yeah, this is Fast and the Furious. Like uh-huh. they, they, like they released and those some weren't cars. even cars. Those are trucks. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, they seem like they were like just saying like fuck yeah. you. Yeah. Well, fuck. that's the yeah. thing. They re- they did. They pulled like the central component out, yeah. which is street mm-hmm. races, yep. which is uh, measuring your dicks. <laughs> Vis-a-vis cars. I mean... Um, and they did, they took all that, they stripped all that stuff out. Because mm-hmm. even like the Fast movies now, you know, it literally is like, okay, we're going to drop ourselves into this place. I guess we'll drop ourselves in inside of cars? <laughs> no, these guys Why? flew commercial. Yeah. They flew yeah. commercial a couple times. Also, economy. Yeah. Well, I was wondering at one point, I was like, I want to just see either of them pack. Because they have a lot of wardrobe changes. And, and at a like certain awesome point, clothes. <laughs> I love that clothes. wherever they were, they found a bag of new clothing for them mm-hmm. to wear. They were like, okay, yeah. this is for you. Put that on. They did that three times oh, in the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, The Rock, when The Rock was put in his outfit where he had like a little mustache oh, in that he scene. Was the, oh, my God. That's, That's the fun. thing. Vin Diesel would never get into uh, funny disguises. No. no. So they're like, we finally get to do like, this. What did I say? No hijinks. But no by the way. No hijinks. Just Dom punch, Dom win, <laughs> family. Family, Dom Punch, yeah, Dom Race, Corona, Corona, I am Groot, I am Groot. <laughs> Somebody told me that he does every one of those lines individually, and and really, Wait, yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, which, man, those are the longest days. <laughs> every, and like, every I am lo- Groot. Yes. Yeah. And ask for a lot of like, what am I saying now? Got it. I am Groot. <laughs> Wow. And now, I am Groot. And uh. now, I am Groot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, I did find that scene funny because uh, Vanessa Kirby, who I lo- like, Amazing. love. Yeah. She uh, was amazing. great. She was awesome. She was great. But I do have to say, they didn't give her a makeup artist. Like, no. at one point, I was Agreed. like, can someone get her chapstick? Yes. Like, her lips were chapped for half the movie. Vanessa Kirby is the only one that retains bruises too. Yes. yes. Like, those two guys get hit with bricks, cars, buildings, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, okay, back to normal. Vanessa Kirby had like a black eye for like, well, a that's Well, I think it's the we're only in a Me Too could... movement. We gotta remember, you hit a lady is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a subtle you know? reminder that, well, let's not keep hitting these ladies <laughs> yeah. with cars. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, Meanwhile, like Idris Elba, Black Superman can punch oh boy. and kick The Rock and Statham over and mm-hmm. over and over again. They are no muss, no fuss. Mm-hmm. They look dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> they are literally being thro- like thrown across rooms. Mm-hmm. When we meet Idris Elba, he punches through a truck. Um, <laughs> But yet she's able to escape him. Anyway, no big deal. But oh my God! When it, but when they're giving out disguises, you know, Jason Statham's on his little uh, workshop where he references being in the Italian job, which I love that mm-hmm. there's a shared universe here. <laughs> that's that's what that it's was. Very yeah. Okay, silly. I was wondering. I mean, what that was a awesome. crazy weird thing to even do. It was oh, weird. And by yeah. the way, did you also notice that um, this is a real deep nerd shit? But um, Idris Elba has a Wyland tattoo, which is the company from Alien, and he works for that company in Alien. So there's also like an Alien Fast and Furious what? crossover Whoa. too. Yeah. Are they going to bring cars to space? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, hope. At least we're going to the, space. I yeah, only we wish, should probably bring I only this wish Mustang. that like, Statham was at the end of this movie like revealed to not be uh, Deckard Shaw, but in fact was Chev Chelios. Yeah! From Crank, and that we just like sh- straight up <laughs> crank the next movie <laughs> by the way that would be a great version of it. they're both dying and they just have to keep on electrocuting themselves if they did do a space movie I feel like a majority of scenes would be ripping off their space suits mm-hmm. and be like fuck it I could breathe out here <laughs> <laughs> your lack of oxygen is nothing for me I bunch 500 pounds but so uh, Deckard Shaw is making all their fake passports Vanessa Kirby looks completely different The Rock completely different Wait, all The it, Rock doesn't look no, completely yeah, different Jason at all. He got a mustache. He has a pencil-thin mustache? 
They, no, the Vanessa dudes Kirby, look exactly the same. Vanessa Kirby legit looks like a completely different person. She's doing the job mm-hmm. right. Right. Jason Statham is wearing a hat. And glasses. Or, orange sunglasses. And glasses. <laughs> and The Rock is wearing a beret <laughs> and a pencil thin mustache because he's supposed to be French. <laughs> These are the only two. By, by the way, nobody's looking for Vanessa Kirby. Her picture's not on the news. Their picture is all over the news. <laughs> by the way, that sequence, they're in. We find out also one of the side challenges of Idris Elba is controlling the media, uh, which is a wild. It's real was, wild. I'm in. It makes no sure. sense. Also, after Idris Elba announces that they're bad, they have the most public conversations. Like, they're talking in that restaurant, and then they're just talking real loudly on that plane. And that lady in the babushka, go, who's she? Maybe she's a bad person. It was like, gotcha. Who knows? By the way, why didn't Kevin Hart recognize them as being Grade A bad guys. Well, By the way, Kevin Hart. Hart is in this movie. <laughs> so is Ryan Reynolds. Yes. And and it's not just like one scene. It's they're both like in the movie. Yes. Although but I think I mean, they, they probably a, work for a day or two. I think they had a clause that was like two locations max. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Both of them were only in two well, locations. Both, well, right. Ryan Reynolds specifically, it shows that he worked one day. They must have done reshoots <laughs> because the, he's like doing a big thing at the end. He's like, I'm still in that coffee shop I met you in earlier. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why would you be in the closed coffee They've got shop? Re- those, yeah. Yeah. Definitely those two guys had reshoot scenes that were just to keep them more in the movie because mm-hmm. somebody was like, this is funny, it's working, the test audience loves when they're on screen, is there any way we can get them to do a little bit more? Well, we can try. And then it's literally like, I'm in a bathroom communicating with you. <laughs> like it's literally like, it answers the question that you always ask, like, well, how did they even get to Samoa? We'll answer it. Kevin Hart, get on the toilet. Let's go. And you know what? Didn't mind it at all. We'll say my breath was taken away when Kevin Hart popped out. (laughs) Same, I guess. I went, oh, no, it's Kevin Hart. Uh, I was so loud during my screening. (laughs) I don't know if people were happy. I I just love to giggle. Ryan Reynolds in the movie is interesting because it seems like he's having fun that he's in a Fast and Furious mm-hmm. movie. <laughs> but then, is were they partners? I think he thinks he's in a Deadpool movie. <laughs> he's playing a character who mm-hmm. seems to be very aware he's in a movie. He all but looks into camera and is like, can you believe I'm in this one too? <laughs> But they were they were like in the special forces together, and I, yes. he yeah. just thought they were best friends, and and, the and they rock. got the same tattoo. Same tattoo. Well, that what it seemed to me was that the game they were trying to play was Ryan Reynolds is obsessed with the Rock, mm-hmm. right? It has the necklace, got the same tattoo, but that they don't, but that the Rock was never like interested in being friends. I don't think they were friends and are now not. I think Ryan Reynolds is just straight obsessed with him. Got but it. they're also they also work together still because it seemed like him handing him the mission. Mm-hmm. There was it some routine like he was his to handler that. Or something. Yeah, yes. yeah. Also, but yet he's not working. Like he retired in the last movie. Yeah, that's it was right. Like, yeah, they're like, they're like, here's your badge and gun back. He's like, nope, I'm gonna be with my kid from now on. But yet he still has a handler. Here's Can what I'll. Can I just say, when he was going through his kids' grades, they were just looking at loose leaf. I, I was like, you just tore that from a legal pad. Like, that's not a report card. I was so, con- I was like, this is yellow. Like, it's, it's not a report card. When the daughter hands, hands him the biology report that is my family tree, and it is just... His name, and uh. then question mark. <laughs> I was like, this is everything. <laughs> this is everything. And here's the thing. This is a movie that, like, makes you genuinely be like, oh, The Rock, he's such a good dad. And then, like, <laughs> eight minutes later, he is jumping out of a skyscraper. Running down the side like Spider-Man. Fall, no, not even oh, falling yeah. uh-huh. until he can grab a man. <laughs> 
who is tethered to the building. By the way, then he jumps off of that man, free falls again. You are a father. And he, he literally got off a Skype phone call to do that. Yeah. He was Skyping. Hold on, click, let me jump out the window. <laughs> like, it wasn't like, oh, I got caught up in the moment. It was, no, I'm doing it. Um, I like that the, the his soldiers... His child should be taken away from him. <laughs> the soldiers that he was after, who, uh, Idris Elba and those other guys, they hook a line onto their back right. and then just run down the face of a skyscraper. That's what they were doing, yeah. right? Yes. But they were doing it as if, oh, we're, we're going to do that thing where we just yeah. hook on and then we run down the face of the skyscraper... <laughs> I mean, they were time travelers. They were from the future. You're right. Yeah. There's they, a cyborg like, and yes. his friends. This, well, that's what. The, like, but they're, they're also cyborgs, right? No. Well, yeah. Oh, well, well, they're all they in a cult together. They're in a cult, and then you have to like win cyborg privileges. Well, I think I think Idris right. Elba. Idris Elba is the most cyborg. Yes. My guess is they've got like a little bit of cyborg. Right. They just can see uh, like uh, like in like yeah, like like Google Maps in their eye and not not cause of uh, they punching just have Google Glass. And and more often but, than not, it's like can't find signal, mm. and it's just guessing where you are. But also, his little eye thing was not helpful. When yeah. someone does this, obviously they're gonna hit you. Yeah, yeah. And it was like impact imminent. Well, yeah, duh. His it's back yeah. here. We we also we also established that Idris Elba. At a certain point in the first scene, he lets someone shoot into his hand. Mm -hmm. So what would any punch do to him? He is a fucking ro Yeah, hit me. Hands down. <laughs> yeah. Just go ahead. Okay, so when Idris Elba is defeated, I was like, I was like, why the black man? Why does he have to die? But then I was like, well, he's a cyborg. He's not black. <laughs> but by the way. If we know anything from this franchise, he will be back. Oh, he's yes. just deactivated. Oh, yeah, he's just deactivated. Yeah, he's yeah. like an old iPhone. He, I'm not kidding. Based on how these movies work, he will be a good guy in mm. two movies. One hundred percent. And I thought one hundred percent. There felt like an eighty-five percent chance that he'd be like, "I'll be good now." Like it was, like, yes. "I'll break yeah. my." Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. he will they, they, again. Let me remind you, Jason Statham killed Han. Yeah. He's a bad guy. <laughs> I take he offense to this. killed one of the best characters in the series. Here's yeah. my issue with this. Everyone who wants justice for Han, I'm going to talk to you Han. for a second and say this. Han was a part of an operation that attached a safe to a car and ran <laughs> down the street. So many people died. Han is also a bad guy. Han has blood on his hands. A little kid eating ice cream in wherever the fuck they were, Brazil. Brazil. Blah! Like, dead. Because of a fucking safe. Han is no... They all got blood on their hands, people. We don't need to be singing praises for you know for what? Han. Like, Giselle's dead, too. Yeah, justice for Giselle. Well, Giselle fell out the plane. I, <laughs> I think. Yeah, if you fall out the plane, fuck you. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, the one thing that was so disturbing about Idris Elba's henchman, this is the one thing, I, mm -hmm. it was a one small detail, and I feel like it didn't get enough attention. But they were talking about the bodies that they found at the scene of that opening crime, and they said they were stabbed by a brick. And it was like, oh, and so they were just killed by bullets. Mm -hmm. But then, like, Idris Elba was like, take care of them. So one of those fucking cyborgs was like, I'm going to fucking shove a brick. <laughs> like, oh, what I, was that's right. that we, never, we didn't see that particular no, murder. Yeah. Like, what is that? Like, that was their getting, casually getting rid? It's like stabbing someone through with a brick? My assumption was that Idris Elba had done that. No, because no. he got on his yeah, no, no, self-riding right. motorcycle you're and right. went away. That motorcycle... <laughs> is very smart. And very smart, and actually, in the movie, makes Transformer sounds. <laughs> yes. yes. The sound cue from Transformers... <laughs> dish, 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 yes. ...is used in this movie. Yes. That's right. This movie's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Like, this movie's like, like fuck I said. you. Your thing, we do it too. <laughs> Your thing's our thing. You got superheroes? Fuck you, we got them too now. <laughs> what, you I, think I transforms? Have... Machines transform? Yep, we do that. 
<laughs> what does your thing sound like? Fuck, we'll do that too. All of a sudden, they're in full pirates costume. They're just doing Pirates of the Caribbean. They're like, fuck, what? We're fuck fucking it. pirates now. We fuck have it. ships. We have a multiverse. Some of us are pirates. Fuck it. <laughs> All of a sudden, collecting stones, putting them in Idris Elba's uh, spine. Mm-hmm. Clink, 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 clink. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Um, the uh, <laughs> Idris Elba w- w- was awesome. Like yeah. he was a great bad the guy. Best. Yes, he was hilarious. So funny. I really loved when he went through that double decker bus and then threw a fit. Yeah, <laughs> he, was, oh. he was pissed off. <laughs> reaction when I go through a double-decker bus. That double, he, not only did he go through it, he seemingly ripped off like a full <laughs> side of it. But keep in mind, nobody was on it. No. Like, he should have plowed through people, be covered in their blood, yeah. and Honestly, still throw a tantrum. What a been downer great. that would be to have like a woman hanging off the side of the right? bus. But Dead that's, as Idris Elba's like, rats! But that's, that's, that's the world these movies live in. Mm-hmm. These movies live in a world in which the world's population is 3,200 people. <laughs> they and all, none of our heroes interact with them at, at all. all. They also live in a world where in the middle of, like, wherever they are in London, in the, uh, like, uh, where they're seeing all the jumbotrons, they play every country's news channel simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. It's as if the, the, the news in Times Square was like, oh, you want to see six different channels of news? They're all right here. <laughs> like, yeah, why, why would you ever want to be in London? Like, I wonder what Japanese, uh, what, what the news of Japan's doing there. Oh, oh see, they're on there too. <laughs> they all went live. No matter what, that's all different times of the day. Uh-huh. That's London, that's New York, that's Germany. It's all like, yeah, breaking news. These guys, get them. <laughs> Even though they're in London, get them. That get was em. that was interesting when Idris Elba it, when it's revealed that he's in control of all news and media, and immediately everyone on CNN and Fox, everyone's just reading Idris Elba's news. Yeah, like how in the world did he do that? A text message. Oh he, right, okay, sorry. Well, here's the thing: there come that what what's it called? Wayland. No. Or, oh. Etion. Etion, yeah. So Etion controls the world's media, right? They've created a cyborg super soldier, <laughs> and they are their primary concern is a virus? Like they because they want to wipe people out or blah blah blah. They are already have achieved multiple like villain goals. Right. They've all they're they've already won. Because Hobbs and because everyone else has not been able to stop them. But they seem to be operating in the background entirely. (laughs) Like they have like they have done like four things already that are worthy of like like one single movie's pursuit. Did they did they make the connection from the virus to the cyborg army and eventually turning everyone into cyborgs? Yes, because they're, they're going to kill the weak, cyborg the strong, and right. that's like human evolution. But I thought the virus killed everybody. Yeah. So wouldn't it just yeah. be only like the weak. Idris Elba? Only the weak. No, only oh, the weak. Only the, uh, right? What? It's programmed no, I thought to it was, kill the weak. No, I, I thought, thought you it, said that literally... It melts it, your insides. It, it, it melts your insides because the new one's going to melt your outsides. outsides yeah. <laughs> Again... That feels like a joke, <laughs> but yet they treat it real. That's what the hard thing about this movie yeah. is. I'm like, I get it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> like, they, pre- they, they are doing jokes, but they're presenting them with stone faces. <laughs> maybe, it's just, maybe it is just Ryan Reynolds. I'm like, I don't know when to take him seriously or not. I mean, well, that's, that's his magic. That's clearly them, like, with him. We've got, like, two hours with him for reshoots. Like, just riff, riff. <laughs> And somebody threw that line in, and they were like, put it in. I was just going to say, I feel like this is them. He, Ryan, Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds will now have a, another spinoff, right? Isn't that kind of what this... Like, oh, no, this, no, seriously, I figured that's I'm what they were doing. The, the, Please put me in that movie. <laughs> yeah. We all need to be in the Hobbs and Shaw mm-hmm. multiverse. I would, oh, There's yeah. plenty of room. Part of Ryan Reynolds' team in whatever this is. In the what Fast and the Furious What if it's Ryan spin-off. Reynolds and Kevin Hart? Yes. It's them. Great. Yes. Great. You know? Yes. Guys, that would be fun. Don't sell yourself short. Look, I'm a bald man. To see a movie with two bald leads... <laughs> Is one of the how far we have come 
Well, it means until, so much to me. Up until now, that's why you haven't been in Fast and Furious, because they're like, we already have two bald guys. Yeah, three, technically. But uh, now... Now... They need a bald guy on their team to do something. <laughs> Yell at or push around. I don't do whatever. Get your clothes out of the Wait hamper. Oh. Get your clothes you're, out of the that's hamper. That's you get that hamper. Right? Your requests are to be yelled at or pushed around? <laughs> why, do, feel, why don't you get to be a hero? Because <laughs> you need these to, two, the two guys yell at each other and push it. These two guys argue the entire... They, every time they, they take out their guns on each other... Mm-hmm. For I think the first hour and 30 minutes, it's all like, fuck you, fuck oh, you, bam. The great <laughs> act three twist is that they discover the concept of teamwork. <laughs> it's oh, true. These are, these are grown men. Uh-huh. Again, let me remind you, The Rock is a father <laughs> in the movie, and they have to be taught teamwork. And it, it literally is like, I'll take a punch for you. Like it's, it is like, I'll take a punch for you, and then you'll take a punch for me. It truly explains that Washington Post article about yes. how, like, one dude doesn't take more punches than another dude. They were like, I take one, you take one, <laughs> and then I'll take one, you take one. And I was like, what the fuck? Just hit the cyborg. It is, it is a crazy... <laughs> It was so stupid. I was like, also, during that conversation, why didn't Idris Elba kill them? Like, oh, Idris always. Elba could have murdered so many times. Oh, yes. Idris Elba you has know? moments where I feel like he's like that apple ball that spins because it's like, why didn't you... Like, again, Vanessa Kirby is a human woman at this point. Mm-hmm. She has no special skills besides being a badass. Except she can live forever. She was supposed to die after a couple hours. And then she had the sun movie. rose and This movie and only took place in three days, Nicole. What? This 72 movie took place hours, in less than right? 72 hours. There was a lot hours. of sunrises. Se- Come on. Listen, yeah. I, I agree. Mean, like, getting was, to long. Samoa from Russia is a long... 72 yes. hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, she's dead. Agree. No, no, no. The f- travel time alone <laughs> is 72 hours. They, I mean, when they hook her up to a mobile blood laboratory, <laughs> they're I, like, the, the, the justification was so quick. It's like, hey, you're more effective if you're with us. Wait, why? And then Stay in the fucking house. She's on the battlefield with, <laughs> with a blood machine, like, a wearing it like it's a fucking... Keyboard I, on her back. Like it's a cool back. I loved yeah. it. I was like, this is Elizabeth, what's her name? Elizabeth Holmes Thernos or whatever. <laughs> I was like, I love this. I love her. This is great. I, I mean, I watched oh. Vanessa Kirby do anything. I did have an issue with the fact that when they capture her, put her on the plane, they're pulling down the plane. But at any given point, that helicopter, the helicopter could crash and she is in it. Yes. And the one thing is keep her alive yes. and they bring it down in such a way and she kind of lands outside of it but how would they know that let that was let me like- be very clear <laughs> yeah. every single person involved in the helicopter slash dune buggy crash <laughs> at the end of this movie should be completely incinerated yes she period helicopter she crashes like- are famously difficult to survive <laughs> As and far as I know. everybody survives. Everyone. <laughs> Even have- the machine. Even the blood machine. But also, <laughs> I really enjoy that scene specifically because the chain broke and then The Rock was like, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this man is just... I mean, <laughs> that was... That a- helicopter! And I was like, no one said, no, you can't. Look, he literally... <laughs> From the last movie, I, he picked up a fucking missile, torpedo, a torpedo. torpedo, and tossed it. Well, there was a grenade at one point that someone put the pin back in. Oh, yeah, I was like, no, you can't do it. that. And then Homegirl's booby traps didn't trick nobody. <laughs> she did all this wire work well, with the grenade, and, and everyone just, no, everyone stepped over it. Yeah. Because Jason's like, tippy tap at the computer, and then there's a dude behind him that You're didn't right. trip the wire. And I was like, I guess women are stupid. Here's what I'll say. If you're going to have a booby trap, make it boobier. <laughs> Wait, Adam, you were saying... Uh... No, I, I was just, just to go back to the, the, the magic blood machine. 
It occurred to me w- w- when they were prepping for the battle in Samoa that the primary reason they w- went while they were in Russia and they're like, what are we going to do? There's that we've got this blood machine. It's broken. Clearly we need to. And he's like, I know they go to Samoa to go to his brother's car garage yeah. to fix this blood machine. Well, he's the best That's mechanic. Why they, he's the best mechanic. Right. But this is a piece of imaginary technology yeah. that, that takes a, a, a poison out of blood and places it back into a capsule. Am I right? Is that yes, what the, 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 the machine? Yes. The machine is very complex because it's a syringe that seemingly is sucking everything in like a vacuum, uh-huh. but not all the blood. Just, just, just the a little vial. Yes. I'm sorry. I, I feel like you guys. Listen. I feel like you guys are poking holes in this, and I need, I need to remind you they have a 3D printer. My right. favorite so moment. So they can do anything. My right. favorite moment in that scene, it was supposed to be Jason Momoa as his brother, but he couldn't do it because of scheduling conflicts, wow. which would have been amazing. Cliff Momoa Curtis was in great, Samoa, though. buddy. I would have loved Curtis it. Was well, great. I like that they gave that braided man a chance. He was also, great. the woman who played the mom, how wild. <laughs> this bitch is throwing flip-flops and she... <laughs> She had this real chunky monologue. I was like, that was her audition, and I can't believe she was hired. I, <laughs> she, <laughs> I loved her so much. I, I love I love when that the brother, the the ponytail brother, the dual ponytail brother, like he he went goodwill hunting at a certain moment. He's like, yeah, yeah, all right, here it is. Yeah. Well, how? What do you get? Like, oh, that's no like mm-hmm. that's like, oh my god. <laughs> When they go to Eddie Marzan's house, who's like the scientist who invented the blood machine yes. and the virus or whatever, and he's written science all over every <laughs> surface of the room. Yeah. And you're like, yep. what the fuck is this? Yeah. I mean, Eddie Marzan, not super smart because when he gets beat up, like one gla- like one side of his glasses is like mm-hmm. cracked and he never fixes it. No. Like, yeah. He's like later, just pop that one out. It didn't work. Like he's like keeping... Well, it's only, I mean, he's only there for like, he's probably alive for 36 hours of the movie. Yeah, he mm. dies, right? He dies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Who he, when he comes out with the flamethrower... Who would have thought that a yeah. flamethrower played a prominent role in two movies that made yeah. $100 million? <laughs> Huge. Once upon a time in Hollywood and Hobbs and Shaw using the same weapon? Yeah. I blame Elon Musk. (laughs) Why? Because his company sells a flamethrower. Really? Do they really? They do. Sounds wild. I know. So he like wants to right? Am I wrong? Doesn't his company have a flamethrower? Yeah, thank you. Why do you all know? That's wild. (laughs) I have one at home. Can we just talk about the opening, the introduction Mm -hmm. to these characters, the dual scenes? Oh, boy, they're different. (laughs) But yet, Mm kind of the same. Kind of the same. They got to fight. The one thing that I did like that those opening moments showed you was that it it seems like Jason Statham does not train in any way. He gets up, eats a nice egg, like omelet, and then goes get gets a beer. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like, but he doesn't, there's never like, there was no push-ups, Mm-mm. no sit-ups, but he is ready to fucking kick ass at a given. And then he was holding that champagne bottle and like catching it and it seemed important and then he broke it. At the well, end of that fight, I, I mean, was I think it was. Confused. I mean, it was the best, I mean, I think it was one of my favorite lines. He goes, I'm a champagne problem and then mm-hmm. just beat them the fuck out of with the champagne bottle. <laughs> But why was it so important for him to catch? I get the choreography. Get to kind of knock yeah, it again. To but use then it he again. just broke it at the end. Well, the fight was over. Then yeah. he didn't need it as a Drink weapon it. anymore. Drink it. Nicole, I see. Nicole I see had what's going on with the waist. You are you are upset. The waist. I love booze. <laughs> now you're much more of you're much more of um you're a Hobbs you're a Hobbs girl That's your, where he's. That's Double your shotting phrase, tequila, right? Yeah, I love booze. <laughs> oh, when when Hobbs double shotted the tequila, I thought that was interesting. Why that, was that happening? But but also that they didn't just use a different take because he did it and he got, <laughs> tequila just ran down his chin. It, but also, it wasn't why? a cool thing. It sounds no. cool. It's like, and you come in, and you don't do a shot. You do yeah. two shots. I'll do it at the same time. Great. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then, but also, and then why his would... notes, he's like, remember when I did that double shot of tequila? I noticed that wasn't in there. Can we throw that in? They're like, sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll throw that back in there. So Dwayne really wants the double shot back in? But it dribbles Wait, down it his It dribbles chin. down his face and it looks weird. I know, but he asked for it to be put back in. Yeah. Oh, who gives a shit? Put it in. <laughs> also, do you think The Rock was like, bring me your tightest denim jackets? <laughs> he wore at least three very tight yes. denim oh, yeah. jackets. Yes. One of them is his favorite. His favorite jacket. Which is wild. That can't be it. <laughs> They, they are, this is a, a movie of great jackets. As a fan of jackets, I was a fan of this movie. <laughs> oh, and I, was I like, love oh. that they, here's the thing. We all know that we love the show Suits. <laughs> yes. We but love Suits. What if I could tell you there was a new <laughs> spinoff of this movie called Jackets? <laughs> Don't they call out Jason Statham at, at yes. one point? Oh, in Samoa for wearing a jacket and it's like 100 mm-hmm. degrees. He said it's 110 it. degrees. Yeah. Why are you wearing a jacket? Yeah. He goes, throw another jacket on. Mm-hmm. The insults between them were Flawless. so fucking fun. It's they the were fun. The best. It seemed like they were, like, and they didn't run out. It wasn't like, they, ne- like, at the end of this movie, I don't, well, they're not friends, because if you stayed for the second post credit scene, mm-hmm. like, The Rock calls the cops on him for on what? On Statham. On Statham, yeah. The Rock calls on Statham under the name Huge Anus mm-hmm. or Hugh Anus. Hugh Anus. Hugh, Hugh Janus. Janus. Hugh, yeah. Hugh. Wait, do you really not get this? <laughs> no, I got I got I got it. It's, Hugh is like a weird, obscure name, so it'd be funny to call him Hugh. It's a weird name. Right? No. Yeah. yeah a British wow. weird name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the first one they used in the with the passport? My, my dick? No, Mike. Wait, what Mike was Mike Oxmall. Mike, 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 Mike Ox. Mike Oxmall. Mike Oxmall. Mike Oxmall. Oh, Mike Oxmall. Mike Oxmall. Also, I've never been to the airport and... Never? And, no. <laughs> No, I How just, do you get around? I just stay at home and uh, sometimes I blink and appear places. Uh, <laughs> but like, I've never been to the airport where they have like a monitor that says accepted or denied. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And it seems so based on nothing. Nothing. Well, in the movie, I think the logic of the movie sets up that for some reason Statham has um, made, has put Mike Oxmall on a list of some sort yes. to get oh. rid of him so that he and Vanessa Kirby can go into because he basically says she's like why did you do that and he was like he would only be dragging us down I gotta get rid of him blah 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 that's and, why I think but that it happens. also posits a world in which they get to the airport early enough that the <laughs> rock can solve that problem and still board <laughs> yeah. the flight before the door is closed and, again and, and 72 how, hours and how gotta does get he, there two hours early international and how does he solve that problem he says people like him mm-hmm. that's how he gets out of the TSA he, might, he doesn't like, have the mustache the anymore he yeah. doesn't have the pencils he doesn't have oh, the yeah, mustache oh yeah he doesn't when like, he comes uh, back <laughs> not only doesn't he <laughs> Does he not have the mustache? He doesn't explain it. It's as if, it's as if the police, uh, like, stop him, bring him back into a room, and he's like, no, 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 no. Don't you guys understand? It's me, The Rock. I'm shooting a movie. I'm shooting a sequel, a spinoff of The Fast and Furious. We're doing the Hobbs and Shaw from The Fast. Oh, of course, go, go, go. Please get on the plane. But in following the, the, the logic of the movie, he gets caught. They bring him into a room to interrogate him. He's one of the two uh, most, uh, most wanted. wanted men in the world. <laughs> and because he's charming, he talks his way out of there. That is a is scathing that... indictment yeah. on airline security. Yeah. <laughs> Also, what did Jason Statham do to their faces on the passport? It, 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 like technology it to weird. do nothing? Because again, Jason Statham has no disguise on besides the hat and, and the orange glasses. glasses yes. Which they would tell him probably take the orange glasses mm-hmm. off. That fucks up our cameras. <laughs> but yeah, that that was a little. I mean, that was a the teeniest, tiniest logical. Really, yeah, I mean, just yeah. very, very. But also, I'm the only one. Wait, when they went to Russia and there was all those pretty women killing people the with Charlie's a, Angels a bunch of I'm sorry, clothing. you mean the lingerie assassins? 
She's that literally was, wearing a bra. What, what, like, what is she wearing? A bra? She's a wearing a bustier yes. and she French kisses Statham yes. for so long. So long. Yeah. Also, again, her weave was fucked up. Did they have any women on that set? Also, like, they're too busy oiling down the, you know, like the rock. That takes a long time. I guess also, so. I don't think she was Russian. No, no, she was fully she American. Was American. She did not have any trace of a Russian accent. Also, no. whose house were they in? Yeah. Why what did were they Statham stealing? know to show up there? And why did in they the... pull up in a Porsche? Like, where did they yeah, get a they Porsche? Get the Porsche? <sighs> they land in Russia and just are delivered a Porsche. From the, and, or is it from the Jason Statham Bat Cave? Right, exactly. Oh, maybe. Like, yes, yeah, like, it uh, was. I, I just think it's from, like, The Rock is a Hertz Club member, and he's a gold member. <laughs> oh, right, he's been right, going right. for a long time. So he's like, give me the, por- the Porsche, please. Not the Corolla, the Porsche. Um, but, they, like, but what I love is they show up mid, like, mid-hijack. Mm-hmm. Like, she's yeah. like... Well, I am in the middle of like tying up this Russian gangster and stealing all of his money. I guess you could stop by. It'll be quick though. <laughs> and then, like, yeah. Like, because they do stop by in the middle of like. And she magically has clothes for them. Yes. More clothes for them yes. than she is herself wearing. <laughs> yes. And and they have changed since their flight. They're all like they, they get on the flight to mm-hmm. Russia. Then they show up at the house in different clothes, mm-hmm. and then she has yet different clothes for them again. Yeah. But she also says, I have clothes for you, right? Yes, like she was expecting them. It's so wild that there was clothing for them, but then home, I'm, like, mm-hmm. it, what's her name? Vanessa Kirby or whatever? Yeah. Her eyeliner really made me angry. <laughs> it, it was so bad. <laughs> it was a wingtip that didn't connect, and I... <laughs> I just don't understand. There were so many costume changes, but she couldn't complete her eye. Like, I, uh, I would love it if, if literally they had no hair and makeup. Because <laughs> if two bald dudes are like, we got it. Oh, hair? You want hair, huh? Her nail polish was uh, also chipped. Her nail polish was fucking chipped, and I don't know if it was a character choice. You guys, where were the women? <laughs> I, I just, by the way... Did I, she get paid? Like, what? <laughs> was she just there? They're like, you'll be in the movie. You look fucking fine. Like, no. And I would have been mad if I was her. All of a sudden, they tell her it's like a low-budget indie. They're like, we all do our own makeup, so just come camera ready. Can you come camera ready? (laughs) You're blowing up like a whole town. Yeah, just come camera ready. We spent it it all on on transporting the Rock's gym. Uh, um, I realized what I could play in the movie. I could play their cue, but I'm just their dresser. I'm always like, oh, Hobbs and Shaw. Well, good thing I have this jacket. Does it do anything? No, it's just a nice jacket. You're it's just a, like, the you're fashion. just a tailor measuring them. I want to be in the movie as like an unsuspecting fat lady who could do things, you know? <laughs> Who's like, ah, oh, she can't do shit. And then I'm like, ooh, hi-ya. <laughs> That's what I want. Oh, Jason, I want that up. movie. Jason, you mentioned earlier A Team montage, and I wrote it down as oh, yeah. fist bump montage. Everyone just, it's just a montage of fist bumps, <laughs> and I loved it. Like, I was like, like, what's up? Fist bump. Over here? Fist bump. Let's go down. You're looking good. Fist bump. Yeah. It was. I don't a, remember this. This oh. was. Yeah, like this is I, when they were. This is so we, in Samoa when, when they're, they're getting oh. ready for the invasion, yeah, yeah. right? In between yes. No Man's Land and the Kill Box. Because to me, it was like the A Team. Because every episode of the A Team, in like the you know at the end of the fourth act, would have like a well, we're here. All we have is the resources of a junkyard, and a, 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 a modern army is about to attack us. Well, I guess we're gonna have to build weapons <laughs> and vehicles out of what we've got. And that's what they do. And it's a straight-up A-team montage. I also like how they rigged up fireworks. Oh, how yeah. will we know they're coming? Yeah. Uh, like they, their fireworks worked like a, like a tripwire. But like, what, how is that even... I don't know how you set up fireworks to tripwires. Yeah, and nobody was tripping the wire because it was on the side of the cars. Yeah. It was... I, also, everyone... Okay, so The Rock calls it Samoa, but everyone calls it Samoa. So what is it? One. Two... <laughs> The only person who has a problem that a war is coming is his brother. Everyone is like, hot dog. Like, also, also, a war. Where they yes, are and people war. kept saying war, and I was like, I'd be mad. I, not only would I be mad, but the main reason I would be mad 
is because two thirds of the people in Samoa are children. <laughs> also, yeah. these guys do custom cars. That's like getting those guys on like that A and E show to be like, <laughs> fight a war guy with the big mustache, walrus American mustache. Chopper? Yeah. American Chopper. American yeah, Chopper. Yeah, American. Ch but also, guys, fight a can war. You imagine, oh. Can you imagine being like, I know who we need to go to. We only have 42 hours. We're going to the American Chopper guys. <laughs> We're gonna get them in the Duck Dynasty, guys, and we're going to war. Oh, wait a minute. We're oh, wait. for sure gonna die. Wait, we gotta get Mythbusters in on this. <laughs> also, none of the Samoan guys, as far as I could tell, uh, were killed, right? No. Zero. They were fine. Yeah. There's Everybody's no blood fine. in the movie. Like, that's yeah. the interesting thing. Like, it rides this line of almost, I mean, the language, I guess, makes it R, but it's surprising. It's like, you're Is not it R? I, ha I, have I to bet imagine. it's PG-13. I think it's PG-13. Because PG there's no blood. There's, there's no nudity. Blood. There's barely any swearing. There's but there one, is a like, real hot kiss. scene. There is? Yes. Okay. So when Homegirl fucking oh. straddles the rock. It is PG-13. That was all I needed. I yeah. was like, ooh, I feel it. Oh. Uh, I think oh. she wraps her, her legs around his face. No, that wasn't sexy. So, like, he's, like, driving in the or whatever. Car, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then she, oh. like, swings in and she straddles him and they have that moment. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> also because, I will say, that happens after she has taken the most vulnerable leap of faith mm -hmm. and he has caught her yes. and pulled her in. Yes, and yes. And she is wet. Yes. She is sopping wet. He is rock hard. <laughs> oh, right? They both, they both full on gush yes. in the truck. Yes, and it's oh, like It's a straight a up second. gush truck. Yes. But the then, way, later on, at sunset, they're like, mwah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like such, he such said, a he, sixth grade and kiss. And he was like, the hey, run. how about another one? She's like, nah. Yes. He's like, yeah, I know, I know. He yeah, says, was, how about sorry. another one? And she turns him down. It, well, it, also, the wind was blowing so hard. Like, he's bald, so you're like, whatever. But she's truly like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it's blowing so, so hard. And then those aerial shots, they were just zooming around them. It's I was like, like, this like isn't a, sexy. We got a drill. Let's use it quicker, wind. fast. <laughs> I was thinking about The Rock's truck choice because he does like to pick like a big, I'm a big guy, like a big truck. But it seems uh, not like the best vehicle to pick when you're trying to escape an exploding town. Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like that thing is going to be a little bit slow moving. But yet, he just drives through walls. Like, yeah. when that fireball goes, like, no, oh, fuck it. <laughs> That's where it seemed like they were really paying the Fast and the Furious debt. Right. Like, getting mm -hmm. all these old, cool trucks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and then when they hit the little thing, and then, like... The engine zoom or whatever. I don't know what it's called. Yes. But that was like a throw to the original totally. movies because that's what they would do. And I was like, I cheered. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ooh, it's happening. So <laughs> I was it's so happening. excited. But like, keep in mind, so you're telling, telling me that the Hobbs custom hot rod builders are building into each car the ability to instantly hook up to a car either in front of or behind you because your assumption is in the course of driving, you will need to centipede up with other, with other hobs. By the way, by the way, they were right. Yeah. And yeah. thank God. Great. It paid off. And, they, and each one of them hit it each time. You got to get it right on the axles. By the way, <laughs> they're... Boom. Clang, clang, well, boom, we're in. When yeah. you talk about when The Rock was holding on to the helicopter. What a treat. Right? That was Ugh. impressive. Maybe, again, slightly unrealistic. What I found, <laughs> what I found to be very unrealistic was once he got control again, he just kind of threw the, the cord to the, 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 the steel drum that turns it. He's like, huh! And then, then that caught it. It was like, that that does not, the, you cannot just throw a cord treated, at a cylindrical object and it catches. They treated having the helicopter on a chain on a winch as if it's fishing. <laughs> they treated it like reel it in, but you gotta let it out a little, give it a little space, then reel it in. When the chopper's tired, you gotta reel it in. This is a machine. 
Um, let's let's go to the audience here. Really? <laughs> let's let's see what you have to say about this movie. And I'm gonna make you think about it though, because what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna say your name, but I need you to give an insult to either The Rock or Jason Statham. So I want you to think of it. What would? You, oh, oh, oh! I mean, look, you could do anything. They literally call The Rock a fat ass. You don't have to be always clever. Uh, all right, so sir, you have your hand up. All right, here you go. Your name? Tim. Tim, do you have an insult? Uh, yeah, it's from the movie. Every time you speak, it's like dragging my balls through broken glass. <laughs> Good to there is that. Solid. So much balls talk in this so movie. Much. So much. I assume to keep it PG-13. Mm-hmm. Like at one point, Statham gives Rock a pair of his pants and says, yeah. "The the <laughs> it might be stretched out in the crotch uh-huh. because of my balls." Yeah. As if the brag in that instance is, "I've got big balls." Yeah. <laughs> Jason. Not a big dick. Yeah. I got a tiny little dick. <laughs> but you know what I've got? Those big, fat, heavy balls. Can, you know what? You know what? I they'll actually, stretch heavy. out. They'll stretch out pants. These balls. Not the dick. You Not the dick. Actually, the dick is just hiding in there. Those balls, though, will ruin denim. Those giant nuts. Maybe, maybe That's he's got weird. a problem. Maybe, maybe he's got elephantitis he's like, of the balls. Well, yeah, you know, maybe he's trying to raise awareness that, you know, big old balls is a, a danger. Um, but it's right. weird because his two, the two fake names he gave him were all about how small his dick was, but then all his brags are about his nuts. Yep. Uh, big balls aren't great, right? I mean... Agreed. Uh, anytime I've encountered them, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Guess you what wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have? Big old balls. Big balls Giant cluttering balls. up my jeans. Yeah, but you I don't, keep them jeans clean. Everything that's hanging off of me has to be shoved into <laughs> pants. I don't want big balls. I don't think... Dude, what do you think? That makes me feel like I'm more virile? I would no love thanks. to think the way you put pants on is like balls and dick out, and then you button them and shove them yes. in. I just am cramming them in. <laughs> like a like a j- in the box. One Get button, in, cram. There, go. Two button, cram. Three button, cram. Oh, can I get it? Can I get the last two buttons over the balls? I'm All right. just cramming it in. Tim, your question. Okay, two, two quick things. The first one is, did you guys notice when he put the pin back in the grenade, the grenade went poof. Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It was like a cyborg yep. grenade as or something. The, as if the grenade had an off sound. <laughs> she, she also wrote, I believe, on the grenade, like, bang, which is, who is that for? Because you would have tripped the wire mm-hmm. and it would have gone off and you'd be dead. You wouldn't be like, oh, shit, grenade, bang. Oh, fuck, oh, I mean, like, like a fucking Wile E. Coyote moment there. What's coming to the one other thing is about your screensaver. I'm sorry, so, does Tim get unlimited <laughs> questions? <laughs> no, I understand he's a regular, but what's happening? Okay, so Paul is Hobbs, Adam is Shaw, Nicole is Vanessa, Jason is Idris, and then on the right, is Fred in this movie? Drop yes. Dead Fred is the spirit creature that... That's it. He is the he is their invisible friend. Fred is the invisible friend that was designed by the ghost of. I'll Craig say King this: Nelson. I don't see Fred in that, but that you do. <laughs> but that you do, Tim, is very interesting. Well, that was a great moment too when The Rock <laughs> took off his Samoan war gear, and then like, oh, got put back on my other shirt. Yeah, and, but he also and, like, had pants fully under his uh, yep. Samoan dress. I was like, what? He it was bothered confusing. To, to put a T-shirt on as he's grabbing onto the back of a truck going like 50 <laughs> miles an hour. All right, sir, your name, your favorite insult, made up or your own, and your question. I'm um, Jordan, and I was just really surprised the rock fit in economy. That was it. All right, well, you should be more surprised he fit in a McLaren um, because... <laughs> That car, it technically... Oh, is that when the three of them were in there? Yeah. The Rock says my favorite thing of the whole movie. He goes, what in the fresh turkey hell? That's PG-13. I guffawed. (laughs) 
They um, do, stamped my feet. They I was do so a straight pleased. up product shot of McLaren's yeah. logo. Yeah. That's that's They also showed, I think, Chevrolet on the old trucks. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, we back to cars. Um well <laughs> Nate Kylie did some research for us. He says the car is a McLaren 720S. The exterior width of that car is 81 inches total. So keep in mind the interior would be 8 to 12 uh, inches smaller than that. So let's say generously the interior of the car is 80 inches total. All right. Then the rock's chest measurement is 50 inches. <laughs> what? And, and, the, and Statham's uh. chest measurement is 41 inches. Uh. So... Based on the simple art of arithmetic, we conclude that 91 inches of friggin' man will not fit into an 80-inch width I mean, car. But honestly, it explains why women are so small in movies, so they can fit. Get that car. By the way, did you guys have any issue with that they were brothers, uh, that they were brother and sister, even though they were 22 years apart? <laughs> you know that I, I didn't. Did, question I didn't. It. Uh, that's the. I, I mean, not. I mean, sure. If you want to like be like, eh, but like, I I did not care. I thought they were very compelling and charismatic together. I, I didn't love mind them. it. So I, I loved yeah, it. They were and great. I, did, yeah, I don't I, need to be the police on like. Well, how late does Helen Marin fuck? <laughs> because that's the indictment. The indictment is Helen Marin fucked too old. <laughs> If we, you want to say that their I, age difference is a problem, so you're criticizing Helen Marin. Why you're right. We do jail. have police for that, so you don't need to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Although I would have liked to see like a 22-year-old guy, like, or maybe like a 30-year-old guy playing with a six-year-old kid doing the Mick Jagger thing <laughs> in the flashback. <laughs> <laughs> Just that like a real incredible. crazy lopsided age. <laughs> when we were kids, <laughs> yeah, he's smoking a cigarette with a pint of beer in his hand. Do you think if you walked around and asked people on the street, how old is Jason Statham? Like, how old would they I'll say he is? I'll tell you what is? I think he is. 37. Really? Like, Jason I, Statham is at least 58 years old. <laughs> I would, I would say he's at least 51. He's for I, sure in his 50s. I think he's ageless. Uh, I truly, I don't know. I look at him, I'm like, you aged well for a white man. He you know, like, did. I think he looks oh, okay. I'm not criticizing him. I think he looks great. I think the movie thinks they're pulling off. Mm. Jason Statham is 38 years old. Yeah. Ah. Jason Statham, I believe, is in his mid-50s. <laughs> Wait, is he, though? Anyone want to Google that right here? Because I'm not... 52. Ooh, wow. wow. Yeah. Whoa. 52. 52. And he looks great. Looks but amazing. That, the discrepancy between him and Vanessa Kirby, who is, but they I'm look, sure, they in look her 30s. Like yeah, they look great together. Yeah. Paul, I'm still stuck on your, like, your flashbacks to the Mick Jagger and, <laughs> like, using the Irishman technology to make Jason uh. Statham 22 or, like, 32 uh. with a little girl and pulling off jobs together. I want that movie. Give me a prequel. Sir, your name, your insult, your question. Uh, my name is Rich. I actually made the Twitter poster for you, so thank you for that. Oh, there we go. Oh, this? that's awesome. This one? He made a different one. He made a different one. Oh. Uh, my insult is, uh, I think that shirt's cutting off circulation to your brain. That's great. Um, and then, okay, a so... classic Los Angeles accent. <laughs> As we all know. Okay. The only flaw with this movie is that Statham wasn't in L.A. I mean, that's what we knew. Okay, so we have two accomplished lawmen who don't like each other but have to work together. They're set up by a bad guy and have to clear their names. There's sexual tension with a sister. Is this Tango and Cash? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Tango and Cash came to mind many times during the movie last night. Have you seen Tango oh, and Cash? Nicole? Sure haven't. <laughs> Tango right. in it's, cash? It's very... Is it about like a fiery Latina and a black man? Yes. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That would make so much more that sense. That would be unreal. That would make so much more sense. Selma Hayek <laughs> and Chris Tucker in Tango, Tango and cash. And cash. Um, guys, <laughs> I have a real... I got a real brain buster here. Um, this is going to blow your mind. So tell them what you got. Tell me what you got. So, 
I was told a, a rumor today by a friend in the industry, because David Leach is using everybody that he's worked with before, the rumor is that Keanu will be the voice in the next one. I mean, come on. The voice The voice of the... The voice of the thing? Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Go ahead, Adam. I was just going to say, my son had the theory at the end that the voice is the... Is, uh, is uh, The Rock and his brother's father. Who, right. Right? Isn't that a good one? Oh, Except that, that's here's good. what I'll say. Right? The voice says multiple times that the voice knows Shaw. Right. right? But then mm-hmm. he said, we'll have a hell of a reunion to Hobbs. He knows Was that what it was? Not Shaw, it's Hobbs? A, a hell of wait, a so, family wait, 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 reunion. Hang on. Hold on, hold on. We're going to go back to Who does Rich. the voice say it knows? It's, it was the voice saying to Hobbs, we have a, or about Hobbs, we have a history. Mm-hmm. You probably don't remember me, but we have a history. And Idris Elba has a connection to Shaw. Yes. Now, Doesn't the voice say something about knowing Shaw? It's good, like it's... They wanted him years ago. Yes. They had Idris Elba try to uh, recruit to, him. Like, no, no, I know that, but I meant the voice. Doesn't, the, okay, maybe I'm the wrong. Voice okay. says, the voice says that about, sh- let's... But yeah. by the way, here's, a, here's what I want to just say. Because I, bo- heard, I both- heard a theory oh. that the voice is Han. Oh, oh shit. Wow. That the voice is Han, and Han was the first cyborg enhanced super. Oh. Oh. This is not my theory. I'm not originating this. This I heard somewhere else. So let me, I'm just. Putting it out, I like that as an idea. Oh, okay. A riot started at Largo on uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> La Cienega also, Boulevard. Because... I also heard that the voice could be, uh, and I don't like this as much, Charlize Theron's character. Yeah. Well, we're, here's what I'll say. Charlize Theron is going to be in Fast 9. So, uh, oh, okay. There's Wait, a little is? bit. Sorry. Charlize Theron. Char- oh, so but, then probably not. But here is my theory. Combines two of them. What if Keanu Reeves is the Rock's dad? I'm in. Like, yeah, truly, I'm in. I'm in. I'm no in. questions. I love it. Like, like, and I hey. hope they dress him like a traditional Samoa warrior, you know? Like, just fully do it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ma'am, come to me. She's trying to grab that mic, Paul. Yeah, I know. Ma'am, your name, your insult, your question. Okay, my oh, name is... Oh, look at her. Grabbing, oh, hi. <laughs> grabbing right at it. Uh, my name is Chelsea. My insult is I think The Rock has bigger tits than me. Um, oh. <laughs> I like that. That's a good insult. That's an original insult. Who are insult. you insulting? She's insulting the... <laughs> No, no, that's but you. The, uh, she she made up the insult. I you're the first person yeah. who did it. I see. I see. And so yeah, but you and just, she's you insulting to, the Rock because he's to, got big old titties. I see. And he's not supposed to have titties. So like, let's sell it though. Sell it. Like you just kind of ran by. Like pretend the Rock is right here and sell it. <laughs> yeah, pretend I'm the Rock. What's that mic? <laughs> the Rock. You've got bigger tits than me. Boom! And I like that you called him The Rock. All right, now your question. My question is, when the movie starts, we see Hattie, and she's this, like, cool lady policeman, and I was like, oh, nice. Like, okay, this diversity on the squad. And then, literally, for the rest of the movie, we never see any other female like a minion, uh, scientist, uh, like what were the lingerie girls? The lingerie girls. <laughs> There's a whole Russian lingerie no, I, but they're not mercenary in team. Their whole thing, they're just like a Victoria's Secret house. Yes, but that... they're liberating Russia. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are the other? Like combat operatives alongside Hattie, is she the one? But this is why this is why this is going to be a great franchise. They're going to learn first about teamwork, then that women can do cool stuff, <laughs> then like it's they're slowly here's, evolving gentlemen. Here, here's what they're, I will say, because I do think many times they could have sidelined or marginalized Vanessa Kirby. Right? You're like, oh, you've got to do the machine, so go over there now. But they just instead are like, strap it to your back, keep fighting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, great. The machine's on your back. You still go through a helicopter crash. Like, they do... She is, I will say, 
in my uh, opinion, a total fucking badass in this movie. She gets to fucking fight The Rock. Even when she's got like the virus in her system, Mm -hmm. even when she's like like the thing strapped to her back, she's still kicking ass. Yeah, it was the three of them. I I did think, I thought it was a missed opportunity as as we're getting closer to the 72 hours, she should have started getting sick. Yes. And then saved at the last second. Yeah, she doesn't ever appear weak at all because the capsule should be deteriorating. But I will say that when she fights The Rock, which is a great sequence, The Rock is sort of like, I feel like the attitude is like, girls. Like, (laughs) all right, threw a cement block in my head. No, lady. (laughs) Like, like, he's like, all right, you got me. Like, it's a very, like, he (laughs) kept on charging her as if, like, they are unhurtable. Mm-hmm. They, it's amazing. Uh, obviously, we had an opinion about this movie. There are people out there with actually, honestly, the same exact opinion as us. Um, but why not hear some of those? It is now time for Second Opinions. Just saw a film that was second to none. Gonna give it my second opinion. Where I can tell all these jerks how I feel online. State that Angelino, he owns my soul. But movie is better, I don't know. Idris Elba and the rock, a girl could cry. Whoa, Amazon stars five. Paul, back off. She's not done. You got this. Bam, bam, bam. Dang it. I'm Derek, and I give my stars to this. And I give it five. Whoa, Amazon stars. All right. That is a, a talented crew of second opinions. Was it, though? That was incredible. Was it, uh, though? I loved it. I loved it when my friend said, I'm not done. And then continued and to she say, was I'm so, not done. She was, though, so close to done. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like there was a lot more. No. There was just a tiny bit more. And mm-hmm. the audience was so behind it that you could have just got that's just gotten off right God, there. Get out while the getting's good. <laughs> it um, was all great. I loved it. Was it? Yes. <laughs> Those are some amazing second opinions. We picked one, and the rest will be uh, sent to the back of the episode. You can listen to the... Oh, no, no big deal. You can still hear them at the end of the episode, though. Um, all right. Um... <laughs> Um, Sent to the back of the episode. Get to that back of the episode. You know episode. what? The, the songs can ride anywhere in the episode they'd like to. Um, there are four reviews total. Four reviews. So this is it. Nate uh, had an easy week this week. Uh, so there are four reviews. They're, they're pretty much all of about five stars. Um, on Amazon? On Amazon, yep. yeah. So this is... Um, Dot com. Uh, yes. Oh, Amazon.com. This one... Um, oh, and not Amazon.net? <laughs> <laughs> this one, uh, we'll start off with uh, Kyle Hurley. Uh, the title of the review is Cool Cool. <laughs> and, uh, and he writes this. Just about enough humor, but just a bit too long. <laughs> not necessarily a good idea, but it works. Five stars. <laughs> But what I love about that is, like, just about enough humor. Just about enough. But also just a bit too long. So how do, that's a delicate balance he's running. Um, and then... <laughs> um, okay. This is... Okay. This is from Chris B. Fairly good dialogue. And banter between the two? Excellent. 
Both of them can be considered dialogue. <laughs> CGI violence and action, great looking tough girl. Oh, by the way, all in caps. Everything here is in caps. The blonde from Mission Impossible and also Shaw's mom. A lot of humor, good villain. Filling out the role nicely. Only flaw, Idris is trying to save the planet. Hobbs and Shaw thwart him. Similar to the Avengers and Thanos, who's trying to save the planet from overpopulation. It just goes to show how short-sighted the good guys really are. They're tough, but not brainy. But, oh well, live it up while you can, boys. Our planet will be dead in 50 years. Five stars. <laughs> Those so are really the only two words. That review reading. is from a hashtag Thanos was right yeah. point of view. <laughs> now it's Idris was right. Wow. Uh, there it is. Um, well, just for perspective, uh, this movie, it, it is PG-13. There's no taglines listed, which is a really an interesting thing. Uh, the budget of this movie, 200 million. Opening weekend, uh, 60, 60 million on opening weekend. And uh, so far, and this may not even be updated, this is a research on 810, uh, the worldwide gross is $247 million, uh, and it's still opening up everywhere right now. Um, that's, I mean, that's all the facts I got, because it, this just came out. We got nothing. How, nope. how did it do critically, like Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, yeah. 100%. Um, 89%. 89. On wow. Yeah. I'm surprised by that. I'm not. Me too. It's so it's much fun. fun. Oh, I mean, oh. I only mean that because I agree. I think it's so much fun. I'm surprised that the critical reception agrees uh, with us. Yeah. yeah, they're right. Fair. Um, well, this has been great. Any, any. Uh, well, I mean, I think it's Here's, a no-brainer. We us, all agree. There's one thing I do want to mention. Yeah. Which is only that none of us have yet mentioned the greatest line in the episode which is Idris Elba saying, oh. genocide, schmenocide. Oh, yeah. Right at the top of the movie. As if to brush off yeah. the severity of their plan being worldwide genocide. But yet, when Idris Elba says it, it has a gravitas to it that doesn't sound... Again, this movie does a great job of saying insane things. So Casting. stone-faced. Yeah, this movie like, is a genocide, schmenocide. Yeah, cool. Yeah, right. this movie is is a triumph of casting, because yeah. all of these people are selling nonsense. Yeah, and I am buying. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. There was not a moment where I was like, no, come yeah. on, no. I was there. Yes. Yeah. The uh, it really it really does like. It is everything that you would want to see, and it seems like everyone who's in it is legitimately happy to be there. Like, mm -hmm. can, can you believe it? Like, I feel like they're like, I'm a fan. I get to be in this movie now and say crazy shit. Um, but, can uh, I ask you a question? Do you think when they go to Samoa and they're doing the whole thing and then they're like, bad guys are coming, we got to get prepared to go to the war, and, and they're like, do you have guns? And he's like, yeah, we've got guns. And he opens the cabinet and there's no guns. Mm -hmm. And mom has replaced all the guns with traditional, like, uh, war implements. Is this meant to be, like, an anti-gun message, like, baked into this weird movie? A hmm. little bit. I, oh. That's how like, I took it, it. Is this movie trying to take a stance that is, like, uh, not guns always? I, I mean, I it's like, it, maybe it's, like, chains and Weapon, like chains and like old school wooden weapons are really the way to go because they're like we don't need weapons we just need bot like they don't they say like we just need bodies or whatever well their whole thing is like we need heart yeah. heart that's right oh, heart 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 Hearts. we got a lot of that or yeah. something yeah, yeah I, I thought that was interesting that like the big final fight took guns out of the equation almost completely. Yeah, because they, 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 they took the chips out of all their electric mm -hmm. guns. Oh, because everybody's hacked, a hacker. They well, hacked the guns. I think they did it because who wants to see people just shooting? I want to see them rub yeah. up against each other and like slam shit into them. I mean, when The Rock took like that wooden like, like mallet, I'm yeah, like, Yeah, like a judge yeah. thing. <laughs> it was like a, what is it called? A hammer, a judge yeah, like hammer? A gavel. A ga <laughs> oh, yeah. A oh, gavel? he's just out here judge judy motherfuckers. <laughs> Guilty. Kablam, kablam, kablam. Guilty. 
I find you in contempt. <laughs> that son of a bitch is guilty. I'll allow it, counselor. <laughs> You know what? My only quibble with the with the movie was I was wondering, and it's fine. It's a Fast and Furious movie, but I was wondering if this maybe after this one, the the sequence the or the set piece that starts in the abandoned warehouse where they talk and decide that we, we we need to fight, that then the chase scene goes out into the abandoned, burned out industrial yeah. park. Um, I wonder if we need to ever see that again. Because it seems right. like every single, not just Fast and the Furious, but every single action movie, there is something that will take place in the abandoned warehouse. Right, it's like it's and the then, abandoned factory that they can just drive factory, through walls yeah. and the silos are coming down. I agree that that could be done. My question about the franchise in general is, he's a robot. Where do they go? Like, who is more... Well, but space yes. is a location. We need, like, a villain. Like, ghost. Uh, ghost? <laughs> this uh, motherfucker gets it. Yeah. Ghost. This ghost guy Busters. gets it. Ghostbusters. Just like Transformers. Like, yeah, Ghostbusters, Jason Reitman, we'll fucking see you. Here's we got the all deal. Ghosts. Here's the deal. The ghost of Han is coming for yes. these fuckers. And again, I want to be clear, no justice is needed for Han. He's a straight-up cold-blooded killer. Many children died in Brazil because of his recklessness with that fucking safe plan. Anyway, oh. anyone, um, uh, Adam, what do, you, what do you got going on? Oh, man, you know what? Uh, not much, but I am just so glad to be here and so glad that this movie came out. I, I feel like this is... For me personally, the most highly anticipated of the Fast and the Furious. Oh, like, absolutely. Same. I, I remember you guys being the ones to tell me they. I, I think at a recording of an episode that they were going to make a Hobbs and Shaw spinoff, and I thought you were joking because it sounded way too good to be true. <laughs> um, so this was just a one hundred percent pleasure. What a great movie. Uh, any, uh, uh, Nicole, what about you? What do you got going on? Oh, boy. Well, uh, I have too many podcasts. Uh, Why Won't You Date Me? Best Friends. I have a, <laughs> a podcast where I recap 90 Day Fiance because it's the funniest oh, show. Oh, that's my favorite thing. I didn't it's, know you do this. Yes. I love this it's show. It's called 90 Day Bay. It's on Patreon. It's $5 a month. But right. uh, it's the <laughs> oh, best show on it's fucking my, television. It's so, oh, it's so fucking... Good. Are you caught up? I'm, I'm a little behind uh, because there's this woman catfish in this man. She only sends him filtered pics, and she's like, I don't know what he's going to do when he sees me. I'm like, bitch, I don't know. Be mad? Wow. It's great. You guys, if you're not to, watching, it is, you it can't is so write good. it in a writer's room. Like, at what? Okay, so, a I mean, I'm, I'm following the majority of them on Instagram. And do I, you? Oh, yes. Did you follow Colty and Larissa's oh, yeah, drama? I mean, oh, my God. They back together now? No. Uh, they had a divorce party in uh, I Vegas saw that. that my co-host Marcy went to. Divorce party for yes. these two. Oh. So if you want to hear me talk about that. I want to watch that Irishman who's like very upset with like his wife going out. He's like, you don't go out without me. That Hard guy. to talk to you. Don't go out with me. <laughs> Sorry, Nicole and I will continue this conversation out there. Um, Jason, uh, what do you want to tell the people about besides our tour in September, which there's still tickets for, hdtgminfo.com. We're in Seattle, Portland, uh, Chicago, Toronto, Toronto, and there's one other place. Uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. Berkeley. Berkeley. Ooh, those are um, good cities. Yeah. I mean, listen, uh, I was on, this will come out this week? Yeah. So I was on Legion two weeks ago. Rap battle Jason. <laughs> yes, if you want to see me in a rap battle with Jermaine Clement, <laughs> Legion... <laughs> Legion two weeks ago. Um, um, let's see. And then also John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. I still haven't seen John Wick 3, and I Adam, can't believe oh, it's it. Great. I'm in that movie. I know. It is and it's great. so weird. I really want to see that movie. Um, yeah, and then, the, and then please come and see us on tour. Yeah, please come. buy the tour merch that is individualized for each uh, location on the tour. It's been really fun. We're making shirts for every show. I mean, inside I want to make jokes. T shirts that are legit inside jokes. They, when you look at our tour shirts, they make no sense. <laughs> 
Um, oh, and I will say this. If you're a casual listener to this show, I would urge you to, if you have not already, listen to the Drop Dead Fred episode. It is one or two back in the feed, and it is, I think, quite possibly, the best and the worst episode of the show. Everything is fine between us, um, but I will tell you this much. But I will say June is not here. Right. I just want you to know that her sister had a baby and she's visiting her sister and that's where she is. So she's There's out of town fine. with everything family? Is fine. You're saying June is out of town with family. <laughs> But everything's cool. Yeah, all right, let's, um, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Um, but also, uh, if you have listened to that episode, check out our mini episode where people have written songs in tribute to that episode. And we actually play some of the deleted scenes from that episode in the mini episode as well. It's and a, having had a couple of weeks now, to pro a month almost, to process it and really think about it, if you continue to represent Team Sanity, you're a fucking moron. Don't you are a fucking moron. You. Where am I, Team Sanity? Team Fred! Fred. Team Sanity! Team Fred. Fred. Sanity! Fred! Team Fred! Sanity Fred! Represent. Fred. Sandy, 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 Sandy. All right, so. Um, <laughs> wow, I really need to listen to this oh, yeah. episode. Oh, yeah. Really? Uh, people, I love people are coming up to me in public and going, hey, man, Team Fred all the way. And for me, Team Sanity, it's been great. And I just want to clarify one thing because on the boards and all this shit, I'm not against creativity, I'm not against imagination. <laughs> I just want a better version of the movie that we saw. I like everything they said. No, you just, said you loved the mom. Yes. She's a she's single a mom. Monster. She cleans shit off the floor and doesn't even go, why did you put shit on the floor? She Fred helps her get help. It. The reason why she's better and the why she finds herself is because the mom gave her the pills. Uh, anyway, I uh, wrote a book called Cosmic Ghost Rider. It's a Marvel book. The final book just came out this week. Uh, you can check it out. Cosmic Ghost Rider destroys Marvel history. Uh, and that is that. Thank you, Adam Scott. Thank you, Nicole Byer. Thank you. Hobbs. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Shaw. Thank you, Largo. Devin up in the booth. Nate doing all the research. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. That's all for our show today. Uh, a big thank you to Adam Scott and Nicole Byer who joined us for this uh, epic takedown of Hobbs and Shaw, one of the best movies of all time, in my personal opinion. Um, if you want to make sure that you are getting the latest in how this get made merch, head on over to tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. We have all of our inside joke shirts from our tour up and available. And a big thank you to Nate Kylie who does all of our research and our uh, producer, uh, Avril Halley, who pulls every one of our films for this podcast. A big hats off to her, never leading us in a wrong direction. Although we didn't need any help this week because this film picked itself. That's how cool it is. A big thank you to our engineer, Devin, recording this show and crystal clear sound at Largo. And Cody, who's just killing it all the time, too. Everybody at Earwolf, everybody at Largo. Um, if you're in L.A., go check out a show at Largo. And we will see you next week for a mini episode where we'll continue to talk about the greatness that is Hobbs and Shaw, or H&S, for all you people out there. And make sure you head on over to Tee Public to get that T-shirt, a new Hobbs and Shaw T-shirt. It's coming your way, baby. Get it. Look ripped. Here we go. Now it's time for Second Opinions. This movie's brilliant. This movie's pure. This film is timeless. Of that I'm sure. The Shaw's kick ass. Hobbs wears really tight shirts. It's time for second opinions. But let me say one thing first. Bald's beautiful. It's beautiful. Bald's beautiful, it's true. Hobbs and Shaw, Tyrese and Diesel too. I sing this song for you. I give you all five star reviews. Yuvia? Give it up for Yuvia! There you go, stand right there. Now it's time for second opinions.
I said, this ain't one star, uh, this ain't two stars. This the whole enchilada and some five yards. I got Hobbs and Shaw. It's the best fucking movie that I ever saw. Yeah, yeah. I said, I just gave it five stars. I just gave it five fucking stars. This movie had the rock. If I gave it four, it would feel wrong. I say this movie's so tight and they do it all right. And I could watch it all motherfucking night. I just gave it five stars. Give it up for Phil. Come on down. Here we go. Now it's time for second. Oh, life has movies, some of them good and some are not good. The lengths that people go to, to praise these films online. Oh no, they gave five stars to Drop Dead Fred. That's them in the corner. That's them with the key board giving second opinions. Give it up for Ryan. Hey, 